behalf of Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan and Infosys Foundation, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you for the 122nd Cultural Outreach Program being conducted in Bengaluru. Your presence here today is a testament for your support for the spirit of arts, culture and tradition. We are truly honored to have you with us. Thank you very much. Today, our stage is graced by the extraordinary Bharatanatyam dancer, Ms. Sophia Salingrose, hailing all the way from New York, United States of America, a dedicated disciple of eminent Bharatanatyam guru, Dr. Shridhara Akki Hebbalu. Let's welcome onto the stage Kalabharti music teacher, Shri Ashwinji, who will guide us through the next part of this event. Good morning for one and all present here. As we commence our proceeding, let's extend a warm welcome to our esteemed chairman, Mr. K.G. Raghavan, and Dr. Raghavendra Chairman, Ananya Trust, Mrs. Andal Vardarajan, philanthropist, Mr. Harinarayan, friend of our guru, uh, friend of Guru Sridharan, and Sophia and her husband, Mr. Medhi. We request you all to be on the dice for the lamp lighting. We also request Ms. Sophia to be on the dice, please. On the main event, we kindly request our chief guest and dignitary to take their seat so that we can commence the extraordinary performance. Let's the, let the event unfold. A small introduction about Ms. Sophia. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. We are gathered here to witness the mesmerizing artistry of Sophia Salingros, a Bharatanatyam artist based in the vibrant city of New York, trained under guidance of Guru Dr. Sridharan Aki Hebbal. Since the tender age of nine, Sophia has blossomed into a dynamic performer and a choreographer, hailed for seamlessly blended strength and grace in her dance as an aptile noted by the Hindu. Recognized as an ICCR empaneled artist, Sophia has graced prestigious stage across the United States, India, and Europe. Her extensive studies under the tutelage of Kalai Mami, Srimati Ramavaidyanathan, along with performances in international tour such as Vavarthana, showcases her dedication to the art form. As a non-Indian dancer, Sophia aims to transcend culture and religious boundaries through her performance, spreading the universal message that dance knows no limits. A distinguished graduate of Columbia University, Sophia is currently pursuing her medical degree at a Will Cornell Medical College, demonstrating her commitment not only to the art but also to the field of medical. Now, let us devile into the enchanting performances that awaits us today, starting with the rhythmic invocation to the Lord Ganapati in a ragam Gambiranatyam Adi Talam, the divine force governing the Talam on Mridanga. This sets the tone of performance that aims to make life akin to the beauty regulated structured piece of music. Shut up, 
expresses her deep love for Lord Shiva, earning for his divine presence. The elements of nature torment her and the mischievous cubed Manmatha aids to her passion with his arrows.
tum 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 ta hata jam de ta hata jam ta de ta hata jam ta de dhan jhunnu ta dhimi ta de tum tum ta hata jam ta ta de ta dhan jhunnu dhimi ta ka de tum tum ta ta hata jam ta ta de ta dhan jhunnu dhimi ta ki tum tum ta dhim dar ke tum ta de tum tum ta ka de tum tum ta ka ta dhim dar ke tum ta ka ta dhim dar ke tum ta de tum tum ta ka 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 de
மந்தனல் மிக சொதிகையில் ராமை நிசையர் நடகாம் கலவிக்கி சைசதென்ன சாமி மனமிக விமுதட சோமந்தனல் மிக சொதிகையில் ராமை நிசையர் நடகாம் கலவிக்கி சைசதென்ன சாமி மனமிக விமுதட ಜಾವಳಿ ಸೆರಗು ಬಿಡು ಒಂದು ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಖಿಯರ ಸೆರಗನ್ನು ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಓಡಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಸಖಿ ಕೇಳ್ತಾಳೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾಳೆ ಬೈದಿಂದ ನನ್ನ ಅತ್ತೆ ನನ್ನ ಮಾವ ನನ್ನ ಗಂಡ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ತಪ್ಪಾಗತ್ತೆ ನನ್ನ ಸೆರಗು ಬಿಡು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಇವಾಗ ಅವರು ಜಾವಳಿ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತಪಡಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ 
ಅದ್ಭುತವಾದ ಮತ್ತು ಅಮೋಘವಾದ ನೃತ್ಯ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶನವನ್ನು ನೋಡುತ್ತಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಇಂದಿನ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೃತ್ಯವು ಅವರು ಸ್ವತಃ ನೃತ್ಯ ಸಂಯೋಜನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರ ಗುರುಗಳ ಮಾರ್ಗದರ್ಶನದಿಂದ ಸ್ವತಃ ಅವರೇ ನೃತ್ಯ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶನ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಈ ಅತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶನ ನೀಡಿದ ಕಲಾವಿದೆಗೆ ಈಗ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಮಾಡೋಣ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಸೋನಿಯಾ ಸೋಲಿಗ್ರೋಸ್ ಮತ್ತು ಅವರ ಪತಿಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಮೇದಿ ಅವರು ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಬರಬೇಕಾಗಿ ವಿನಂತಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಸರ್ ಮೇ ಹಾಗೂ ಇವರನ್ನು ಸನ್ಮಾನಿಸಲು ಭಾರತೀಯ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭವನ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ನಾದ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ರಾಘವನ್ ಸರ್ ಅವರು ಬರಬೇಕಾಗಿ ವಿನಂತಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿಶ್ವನಾಥ್ ಮತ್ತು ಶ್ರೀ ಶೈಲಜ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಅವರು ಬರಬೇಕಾಗಿ ವಿನಂತಿಸುತ್ತೇವೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಸೊ ಉತ್ಸುಕವಾದ ಚಪ್ಪಳೆಗಳಿಂದ ಅವರನ್ನು ಬರಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಇಬ್ಬರ ದಂಪತಿಗಳನ್ನು ಇದೇ ರೀತಿ ಕಲಾಪ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶನಗಳನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರಲಿ ಮತ್ತು ಕಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅಭಿವೃದ್ಧಿ ಹೊಂದಲಿ ಅಂತ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಮನಪೂರ್ವಕಿಯಾಗಿ ಹಾರೈಸೋಣ ಅದವರು ಕೊನೆಯದಾಗಿ ತಿಲ್ಲಾನವನ್ನು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಟೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಸರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಒಂದು ಟೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ವೈಫ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋಫಿಯಾ ಅಲಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹರ್ ಡ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯಾ and this is the most beautiful one people are so nice to us and it's so amazing to be here thanks everyone finally madam matra last questions ide ivaga kone adagi ondu tillana revati ragadalli mishra chaputala ಮುರುಗದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮುರುಗ ಮುರುಗನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ತಿಲ್ಲಾನ ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತಿ ಇದರ ನಂತರ ಕಲಾವಿದರನ್ನು ಕೆಲವು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಅಶ್ವಿನ್ ಸರ್ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನನ 
request sophia to speak a few words about your performance in india and followed by a uh, few students of our bharti vidya bhavan have few questions regarding your performance oh dear yeah. yeah, okay. sure. namaskaram i'd like to first thank bharti vidya bhavan and Vish uncle for providing me this lovely opportunity. I'm very honored to be performing here in Bangalore, the city where my guru is from. So it is always extra special. I have some questions I'm going to answer, but besides that, I just want to say that I am always struck by how welcoming India is to me as someone who is not from here, nor are any of my ancestors, but somehow I feel so connected. Perhaps I was Indian in a prior birth, as several have suggested, but I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for your acceptance and support of my love for this culture. So I'll go through the questions. Okay. Good morning, ma'am. So can you share specific moments and experience? Hello. Can you share a specific moment or a specific experience that solidified your commitment to this dance form, ma'am? Sure. About 10 years ago was my first trip to India. It was actually to Delhi to study under Rama Vaidyanathan for a short period of time. And that's when I first was exposed to how deeply enriched the art form is in life and how much respect there is for it. Not just the one or two hours of class that I had every day, uh, that I had every week in the US, but truly there's so many people who live, breathe, dance, that's all they think about. And it was so, so inspiring and motivating to me to see that and to feel that this is how hard I need to work. So ever since then, I've um, totally committed myself to try and reach that level of dedication and motivates me every time I come back. Hi, ma'am. So my question is about collaboration. Co we know that collaboration is an important aspect for any art. So have you had the chance, uh, have you had the chance to collaborate with any artists from different disciplines or cultural backgrounds? And if so, how has it uh, affected or uh, affected your approach to Bharatanatyam? And what are your gains from those ideas? I've, yeah, I've been lucky to collaborate with many artists, both within the classical dance form, so not only Bharatanatyam, but Kuchipudi, Kathak, Odissi, and then also in other dance forms, such as ballet and modern. 
I myself trained in ballet for 18 years when I was growing up. And there's so much to learn from all the uh, other art styles, not just dance, but acting, singing, music, um, poetry, drawing. There's so much to imbibe within our own art form. I don't do, I don't try to do fusion. I try to gather inspiration and give inspiration into how an essence of a movement or an idea can be transfused into one's own art form. I think it's really important to collaborate. Thank you. really well and uh, my question is as a renowned dancer you must have faced many obstacles so can you share uh, one of it and how you overcame it thank you I wouldn't say renowned I would say aspiring but um, one large I wouldn't say obstacle but unique challenge is that I didn't have any cultural background in terms of what we depict in dance for example going to the temple doing a puja even wearing a sari these hand movements I just learned in class, they didn't really mean anything in the beginning. So I had to do a lot of background research and learning to sort of understand more context. So I got all of those comic books to read about the mythologi mythological stories as a child. I read the epics. I learned how to tie a sari. When I came to India, I learned to eat with my hand. You know, all of those things that you sort of don't think about, but were um, a unique part of my journey and other people's journey as well. But um, So that sort of cultural education that came along with my dance training, and I continue to also try and yeah. maintain. That's great. Thank you. Stay, ma'am. Bharatanatyam is known for its rich traditional and cultural significance. Ma'am, how do you, uh, you know, preserve this cultural elements present in this dance form by expressing your artistic voice, extending the boundary of this art? Um, I'm just at the beginning of my artistic journey. I think every dancer needs to find their own voice. And I'm very fortunate that my guru allows me to choreograph my own pieces which was everything I performed today was my own attempt at choreography. <laughs> Thank you. Under, under his guidance. And I think it's extremely important to stay respectful to your art form and to have a deep understanding of the vocabulary of all of the, the movements, the basic steps, sort of the structure of it. And within there, um, um, experiment, bring new ideas, contemporary themes, old themes, your own voice, but to stay within, to stay respectful to the art form is something I also heard someone once say, even if you lie on the ground, if you lie on the ground with respect, it'll look nice. If you just throw yourself for the purpose of creating something new, that's when I don't fully agree with expounding the boundaries. So that's how I approach choreography. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, Sophia. Wonderful. Thank you. Please share. How did you get into Bharatanatyam? Why, what made you to come here? What inspired you? Question one. I have not completed. <laughs> Second is, what was your criteria in selecting your life partner? And how is that journey going on? <laughs> it's, it's not a, a matter of uh, just light. It is so very, very important in your career. And uh, this, your collaboration with your partner takes you a long way. How is it you selected and how would you like to go ahead? Thank you. Thank you for the question. So I started with ballet when I was five. My mom always wanted me to be a ballerina, professional ballerina. And then when I was nine, I was loving my ballet classes so much. We had a family friend who taught Bharatanatyam at a local school in Texas, in the US, where I grew up. She came over for dinner and told my mom that since I love ballet so much, I should come try this other style of dance. My parents are European, so my mom is Belgian, my dad is Greek. They're very open to other cultures. They'd never heard about Bharatanatyam. They said, sure, why not? 
Um, so they took me. I did my first day at day. I was like, Mom, I want to come back. And she told me, mm, maybe not. This is a little bit too odd for us. It's just too different. You know, everyone is sitting on the floor. They're speaking different languages. I said, no, I really want to go back. She said, okay, fine. And so I am nothing without my parents. They kept taking me since the age of nine, and I just fell more and more in love with the dance form. And just also, I don't think at that age I even noticed that I was any different. And so that's how I grew up. I was so welcomed, just felt like one of everyone else. And that's really a big part of, I think, what encouraged me to continue. And then in terms of life partner, I, like every other girl, had a very long list of qualifications that someone needed to have. But um, when I first met Mehdi, one of the first things I told him about was my dance and how it's extremely important to me, maybe even more important than other things. And he said, that's fine, I totally support you. And then that long list sort of just left. <laughs> and <laughs> he's my biggest support. And I'm so grateful. Hello, Sophie. Hi. Hi. Uh, this question can be slightly off the track from an audience point of view. Uh, see, what would be your personal take on uh, the fact that uh, a lot of expats and the NRI community, you know, uh, predominantly performing only during the, the Margali season, maybe in Chennai or in Bangalore? Uh, while I've constantly noticed there is a deficit of performing artists across the globe, including uh, from the Indian fraternity, there's always a deficit. So why is there? Uh, you know, a surplus or you know, an overwhelming you know, crowd that comes in from the NRA or the expats performing in, in Chennai specifically during the Magali. How do you plan to tackle that? Because you must have seen me running out of, you know, uh, running out of my mind and spoiled for options, whose performance to attend and who's not to. So that is a very tricky situation even as a Rasika. So what would be your take on it and how do you plan to, you know, what would be your proposals or suggestions to encounter there is an even balance of, uh, you know, artists performing so that even as an art lover, everybody gets to perform, and uh, as a Rasika, you get to see all forms of art. Yeah, I think Margari season is famous just because that's when you have the most dance performances, the most concentration of art lovers within the same cities, not just Chennai, but now in Bangalore, Hyderabad, it's starting a sort of a pan-India season, and it's true that many people come from abroad. We have a vacation time during December, so it's convenient. And it's also a chance for us performers to also watch other performances as well and become the Rasika and learn so much. So I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing that there's a surplus at that time. More of it's a, it's a very inspiring and hectic moment in the year. And other, otherwise, there's uh, your regular scheduled programming, but I think um, it's a, it's a tradition, and it just as so. My role within Margari is more of an observer and giving my humble presentation um, in a few cities, but it's it's mostly to learn and to be inspired. Thank you. Hi, Sophia. Um, I have witnessed your journey of dance uh, for a really long time, the moment you've been part of Indian Raga and continued till date. And I also know that you've been uh, professionally into the medical stream. And along with being a medico, uh, practicing, uh, aspiring uh, medico, how have you found time to be at the top of your game or trying to be at the top of your game in Bharatanatyam? Because as Indians, as much as we are culturally inclined, we are also very, very inclined towards our education. So uh, I feel um, me and all the other students over here, I'm not a student, but yeah, there are a lot of uh, aspiring young kids over here who would really want to understand how, despite being in uh, such a demanding uh, you know, medical career, and how you are juggling it with your Bharatanatyam aspirations as well. Yeah, I think we all juggle many hats. We have dance, we have family, we have a job or school, so many commitments. And really the key for, for wh what I find most helpful is very strict time management and having a schedule for every day. This is when I'm going to study, this is when I'm at the hospital, and this is when I'm going to practice. And I'm going to get this done during my practice. And sort of approaching it that way, you hold yourself accountable to get everything done. 
you have to make sacrifices if you're trying to have something else going on at the same time as dance. So TV goes, friends go, <laughs> sleep goes. But at, at the end of the day, I think if it's something that you really love, you'll make time for it somehow. And that's held me through you know, high school, college, um, now medical school. And I hope it'll continue to <laughs> hold true as I start practicing medicine. But, and I really believe that having a separate career while it takes away, obviously, time from being able to commit to dance and to achieve a certain level of, um, of progress in your dance journey, it also brings in very unique perspectives in terms of what I learned about the body, what I learned about the mind, about health, healing, how movement can serve as healing, and just a different way of thinking comes into my dance, and it's something I've noticed with other dancers as well that are another career. For example, my guru was a physician as well as a dancer. It's my biggest inspiration in terms of that. And then the dance will bring in something to your other career as well. Some humanism, some warmth, some relatability with uh, being in tune with others' emotions. So with patience that someone who doesn't have an artistic training can't have. Thank you for your question. Thank you for that wonderful performance. Uh, as somebody who has been deeply involved in different art forms, particularly the Western dance and the Indian dance forms, and somebody who's from a different culture, not uh, an Indian learning the Western form, but more having been with the European formats all the time, and then getting immersed into the Indian forms, what is it that you find as a fundamental difference in the expose in the learning, in the teaching, in the way th it's all conducted? Yeah, I think this is the last question, but um, so my training in ballet versus Bharatanatyam was all about being uplifted and light on your feet like a feather, whereas Bharatanatyam is very grounded, very, you know, centered. And so those two opposing forces are something that stood out to me, especially during my time of doing both. And the other thing is, um, in the Western world, your teacher is very important to you, but he or she's role ends in the classroom as your dance teacher. But in Bharat Nadyam, your guru is much more than a dance teacher. Um, at least for me, I can speak for myself, he's a life mentor, almost another father figure who guides not just my dance journey, but my life, my choices, my choice and partner he had to approve. <laughs> um, I seek his advice on, on so many things, and there's so much more of a, a responsibility you feel towards your guru than towards your ballet teacher. So, thank you. So we conclude the event with a thank you note. My heartly gratitude for enchanting Bhatanatyam performance you shared with us. Your artistry was nothing short of mesmerizing. Your dedication to this class classical dance form was evident in every graceful movement and the passion with which you brought the stories to life was truly inspiring. Wishing you continued success on your artistic journey. Looking forward for your experience, more of captivating performance in our future. Thank you.